ChatGPT, an innovation that is on the minds of everyone from social media influencers to marketing managers and indeed to C-level executives around the world. What is this innovation and what does it mean for the future of work and indeed communication as we know it? Hello and a very warm welcome to the special AI conversation. My name is Samkem Shongo and I am a wealth coach, corporate speaker, author and recent tech enthusiast. Today I am not talking finance or blockchain, but I am speaking artificial intelligence and I'm having a conversation with someone who is very well known on the AI stages around the world. He has spoken at the AI for Good conference in Geneva, the World AI Festival in Cannes, and this April on the 27th, he is hosting the AI for Leaders Summit in Nairobi. Ladies and gentlemen, joining me in this conversation is John Kamara, co-founder of Adanian Labs and founder of the AI Center of Excellence in Africa. Hi, John, and thank you so much for joining me in this conversation. Thank you, Sam. That was quite impressive. <laughs> <laughs> when we think AI, we think humanoids, we think robotics, we think the movie I, Robot with Will Smith, where robots will be controlling our movement and eventually really kill us off this planet. But you have a passion for AI. You want to promote AI on the continent and indeed the development of AI. If these robots are not going to be killing us off, then what exactly is AI? Okay, <laughs> good question. So AI has been around for lots of years. It didn't start yesterday. Um, the ability to use data and build algorithms that help you solve problems quicker, faster, and also allow you to venture into spaces your mind and brain can't compute fast enough. Uh, that is AI. So think about data, lots of data, use it to build intelligence, and then use it to build futuristic ideas, and then apply them now today. When researching artificial intelligence in preparation for this conversation, I came across research that said that AI or artificial intelligence as a term was first coined in 1962 by a man named coincidentally John. And um, back then we were looking at AI being used for what is now your Googles, your Alexias, your even satellite navigation systems, but we have seen AI develop into so much more than just more efficiently producing, you know, your Google search results, for instance. Um, tell us about what the future of AI looks like, or perhaps where AI is now. I think um, AI has moved so far ahead right now, uh, you know, from when you talk about just pure basic machine learning uh, to deep learning. Right. You know, and then to robotics in artificial intelligence. So if you think about Sophia, the robot, I'm sure you've heard about her. Yes. The first humanoid that actually has cognitive intelligence and she can process information as fast as she can seize it, she can think, and she can create new algorithms to help her understand the world around her. So, and that is where AI is going. But for today, you know, ChatGPT, you just mentioned it, and it's really you know, generative AI. So you generate information, the information comes back to you, it's able to process what you have given it and it recreates back that answer to you because it's been fed with over 175 billion data sets to actually program that neural network to understand the questions and give you relative answer after searching its pathway. So AI, it's a I mean, by 2030, we predict AI will be a $13 trillion market. Right. 2030, only seven years away. And the question today with regards to AI is what does it mean for the future of work? All right. Um, apart from, I think a lot of us, as we get familiar with what AI is, we become less fearful that they're going to be, as I said, these robots killing us off physically, but rather killing off our careers. 
So as an ex-banker, I know 10 years ago when uh, I gave a client bad news on a deal that did not go through, they'd turn around and say, well, in 10 years time, you won't have a job anyway because robots would have replaced you. Um, speaking of the future of work, what does that look like? Are we going to see a hybrid environment where AI um, machine learning is complementing the work of human beings? Are we going to see a human jobs being replaced by AI and machines? Or are we going to see the evolution of what humans do? Because as the machines take care of kind of the routine work, does it open up a new era in which human beings can play and contribute to the world of business? I mean, I think a lot of mundane stuff that we do today will have to move on. And that means now you drive back into capacity and developing the skills and talent base for this, you know, industry that is transforming the world. So AI, future of work is definitely going to change. But if you just step back for a second and think about how do you actually engage in AI in emerging markets in Africa, for example, AI lives on data. Right. If there is no data, there is no AI. So in Africa, where we're still struggling with data transformation, where we're just even collecting proper data, playing in the data space, understand intelligence around our data before we even start building models or different other path pathways of that data and where we have a lot of problems from agriculture, climate change, healthcare. So, but what it represents is a massive opportunity for our young people to actually get all these amazing, you know, for our jobs and for us to become the service network for the world and to take that capacity to then recreate our own future using the intelligence. So if, if you don't understand how data plays an important role, mm. and if you also don't have the human capital, which is the human capacity at the right level, um, you would just consume chat GPT. That's all you're going to do. Which has been criticized for not always being accurate. And on the topic of data, I wanted to talk about the credibility of the results that these powerful machines are producing for us. Is it credible enough to run whole businesses on, to make executive decisions on? It, it's only feeding you what has been fed. So it's not thinking for you. So <laughs> you must be, you know, sometimes people are a little bit, I don't want to use this word, but, you know, sometimes people can just be, the word D sometimes. <laughs> you know, so it, it's not going to think for you. Right. It's just you've given it, it's feeding you from what has been told, what has been... But it's learning. Right. Remember, this is version 101. Correct. Three, four years from now, it will be a much smarter. Again, go to look at Sophia version 101 to what she is today. Yeah. And also look at the new types of, you know, robotic AI that is developing, you know, even drone AIs, you know, that are now self-serving and self-learning engines by themselves. You know, so they they basically are self-serving AI, so they know exactly it's learned enough to navigate by itself. So chat GPT will get there as long as you keep feeding it information. Now tell me, we're feeding it information, but this is sensitive company information. This is propriety information. Mm -hmm. What protocols are in place to ensure the safety or and security of this information that we are None. putting into None. Who, who is the who is the AI ethics committee globally? I mean, in Europe at least they're trying in America, but in Africa there's not. I mean, we again we don't we're not playing in the right data space first of all, right? To even understand AI ethics and to begin to define frameworks for ethical AI and you know biased nature of AI. So like you can't even begin to speak. And again, this is where African leaders really do have. To check themselves because remember this is the fastest growing industry mm -hmm. probably in the world at the minute and if you're also looking for foreign direct investment into your country you train a thousand ai engineers and you can outsource them to the rest of the world you probably make more money than so many things you've done put together talking about profitability talking about money whilst making a positive impact let's use the example of ai in healthcare again whilst doing my research, came across a case study where AI will help to improve the speed at which a diagnosis is made uh, if you are you know, at risk of a disease by way of not only your health records uh, or checkups when you go to the doctor, but by way of your wearables and then being able to pick up a change in your blood pressure, et cetera. Um, what does 
AI in healthcare look like in terms of helping hospitals and medical company, med- medical insurance companies, that ecosystem provide better service for their patients, but also to be more profitable. They, again, structured data. If you don't, if you don't have structured data, there is really no way that you can actually use the power of this intelligence that we're talking about. Mm. And I keep repeating myself, data, structured data, data mm. because that is the baseline for us to play in this. AI in healthcare is truly the future of healthcare, mm-hmm. from decision making, you know, for precision healthcare, for preventive healthcare, and patient-driven human-centric healthcare. You know, that is actually the future of healthcare, even helping doctors make decisions quick and fast, because one doctor cannot compute so many different types of decision making processes. But an algorithm that has taken so many data sets from so many different doctors. Imagine if you've learned from a thousand doctors around the world. Would you not be better at making a quicker decision and telling the doctor, this is five decisions that five doctors have made. This is how maybe rather than the doctor sitting there for like five years trying to figure out how to make that one decision. So again, even from a human perspective as well, as a patient, again, it helps you with preventive healthcare, it begins to show you patterns, pattern recognition of your own health by itself, merging different sets of data for you to see. And those patterns are now recognizable. You know, and then your practitioner, your doctor, you know, again, if you look at image generation, different diseases. So it is the future of healthcare, which is happening now. It's not tomorrow. But the question is, which I ask back to you and your audience, will Africa play in that future? That is the real question. The $13 trillion market that we're aiming for. Are we sure that we can play in that market? And do we have that market in our line of sight? Will you play in the AI future, which is here today? That is the question we leave you with on this AI special conversation with Mr. John Kumara. Well, I think the best way to do so is to start where you are with what you have. And as part of doing that, this conversation is my answer to that question, as well as the podcast on technology, where we aim to raise awareness about the digital and technological revolution on the continent. But you're playing a role in capacitating and driving the AI revolution on the continent, specifically with the AI for Leaders Summit on the 27th of April. Perhaps you can take tell us a little bit about what business leaders that have been invited to this event can expect to take away. Cool, thank you. So basically what we've done is rather than going to all these summits around the world, I just want a place where business leaders can understand the business impact, the financial impact of AI for their businesses. So we've invited some of the top leaders in the world to come to Nairobi for the first time ever to now just talk to 100 people. So if you get lucky to be one of the 100 we invite, then you'd listen to some amazing use case conversations about what is happening. But for me, really, my message at the end of the day is really about as Africans, we have to invest in the AI space because it's the most transformative opportunity for us to drive economic and industrial growth at a pace that has never been seen before. And if we're able to do that and build the foundation by data transformation, not just digital transformation, which is not very clever, Data transformation. We think about data in everything we do, every point of collection of information. We think about data. Then, even with climate change, we might actually begin to solve some of that problem because we have the right sets of data and how we collect that data. So that's what I'm going to leave them with. Smart data, using that data to drive Africa's participation, not only in the AI revolution, but indeed to leapfrog all other revolutions in the world that have prevented us from being a participant and a player in the global economy is the message I'm getting from not only the event, but the movement that is Mr. John Kamara and the center, the AI Center of Excellence in Africa. My name is Sam Gamshongo. Thank you for joining us on this AI special. And I hope you are one of the invited to the AI for Leaders Summit in Nairobi on the 27th of April. But if not, keep up to date with all the latest innovations in the world of all things artificial intelligence by getting in touch with the AI Center of Excellence in Africa. Cheers for now.